<laughs> Second stick for more. Can I move my chair in a little? Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Um, we're rolling, right? Sure. Yeah. So here are the ground rules. Think of this more as an oral history so that 50 years from now when we get to see what people thought. Mm -hmm. You do not have to censor yourself and you do not have to be accurate. If you think, like, I think that happened, <laughs> go ahead and tell it. <laughs> So as we start, here we are sitting in historic Sardis, which most of the world thinks of as the, the center of our little Broadway world that we all work in. And you are linked in everyone's minds for you know what you did at the St. James Theater with the producers next door. But the fact that you both are in this gigantic movie, you play all these scenes together and you didn't even know each other then. No. So the first question I guess I have is many, many people have real deep memories or thoughts about Disney. Had you seen the Disney movies when you were a kid? You know, I saw them all. I mean, I remember Snow White and all the way through to the Aristocats. So it was a big deal. The notion of being in one of these films and providing a voice for a character was very uh, important to me. Also, I think Beauty and the Beast had just come out and, you know, there was a rebirth of, of these movies. So I was excited to be at that time to suddenly have a chance to be in one. Ian Matthew was a big movie star. He didn't have to audition, but Ernie Sabella and I actually auditioned. I remember at the time it was then still called King of the Jungle. Yeah. Each of you came to it in a different way, although actually neither one of you were cast in this for what you ultimately did in the movie. In your case, originally we wanted you for Zazu and you had been recorded, oh, and everyone said, Roger Allers, who directed the movie with Rob Minkoff, said, I have found the perfect Zazu. And the other co-director at the time didn't like it at all. I don't even hyenas. remember the part about the bird. The bird? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember reading for the bird at all. Oh. So then, Roger Allers wanted you back to audition for the hyenas, and you came with Ernie, Ernie Sabella. Yeah. Ernie went in and read, and then he came out, and then they, I was gonna go in and read, and I said, would you mind if Ernie read with me, since, you know, it was three people talking, so he came in, and we improvised a little, and then... And then the decision was, we clearly had misthought the whole thing, and you were Timon and Pumbaa. Hakuna Matata. What? It means no worries. November of 1990 was wow. when we started on the movie. Wow. And I was the first producer on it, and I had, was given this kind of dog of a movie. It didn't have any music. Scar was a baboon. It was a war between lions and baboons. Your two characters grew up together, and there was a child version of Timon in the, early, in the earliest version of King in the Jungle. But we cast you because of Ferris Bueller. Because the character was supposed to be a goof-off. Oh, really? And the whole idea was that Simba didn't run off with Timon and Pumbaa. Scar was going to kill Simba the same time he kills Mufasa. He's holding Simba in his mouth, and it's about to break his neck. Hmm. And everyone comes in and says, oh my gosh, you saved him from the stampede. And the idea was you were going to grow up with Scar and be the goof-off kid. Oh. And so it was all supposed to be this throw-off kind of Ferris Bueller, goofing around, delightful oh. scamp. And the story got rewritten, but mm -hmm. we cast you as that. And then you became the heroic lead. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know that. I, I remember when it started, they were saying it's loosely based on Hamlet. We well, were actually think thinking Joseph and had prodigal son. And the Hamlet thing, of course, is the, the, the father, scar, ghost father, the father ghost and stuff. But yeah. we, that actually was a discovery after the fact when someone said, gee, it's kind of like Hamlet. Oh, really? But we weren't kind of modeling it towards that. Uh, but, well, I know but, you know, I was playing lead. Hamlet, but I, <laughs> apparently that, you know. There is a scene between the two of you, though, that you're talking about your father, and you say, someone's told me the kings of the past Live there, and those stars look down on us. That's yeah, you try to say in that line. Yeah, uh, you you made it sing. What Thank can you. I say? And then you say, "What mook made that up?" <laughs> yeah. What mook made that up? <laughs> and you apparently improvise this line. Our yeah. records say, "Well, this oh, yeah. this caused a stir." This <laughs> what mook? What mook? What mook made that up? <laughs> Because, you know, why is this a stir, right? Because there was no internet. It was like in 1992 when you recorded that or whatever. And we thought that the word mook might be obscene. Might be obscene? Mook? Yeah. What would mook mean? Is it oh, we didn't know. Mook? You know, like a jerk or... Yeah. Kind of like a what? jerk. Yeah. Yeah. More aggressive than nebbish. And uh, we had to go look it up and had a development executive researcher go off to make oh sure the scene Lord. could stay in the movie. Really? That's yeah. isn't what that hilarious? That you know. And if you enter in Google today what Mook made that up, a picture of Timon <coughs> comes up now. It's like a classic Disney line. <laughs> An element that everybody always talks about who does a voiceover for one of these films is that when they film you recording 
and very often your mannerisms are incorporated sometimes into the animated character. And at one point, you see the meerkat go like this, <laughs> which is a gesture, you know, I've often made where I put my head in my hands. Usually when, like, when I'm acting. A time. <laughs> no, no, but just sort of a, uh, this moment. And it was from far away, this little teeny tiny animal doing this <laughs> totally killed me. Carnivores. Ugh. Did they uh, capture you working your mane, do you think? Uh, <laughs> Look at that toss of the hair. Yeah. They did capture Could you see facial. Did well, they? I can. I don't think I look like him, but I, but I do think he used a lot of my uh, expressions, definitely. We That's recorded for five years, four years. Yeah, How many years, years did we record yeah. for? Uh, yeah, well, you would, have, you would have both come in at the very, very end of 94 for pickups and stuff, because we were still yeah. changing at the very end. We need more wonder on line 209. <laughs> Well, what sort of happened to me, yeah. A little more awe. Because they are directing you through that big piece of glass. They direct you through glass, and they give you sometimes the number of the line that they want. <laughs> That's like the John Wayne story. Yeah, oh, that one? <laughs> yeah. yeah. How was that? Well, you know, <laughs> Cecil B. DeMille and John Wayne, he's saying to him, he's saying, he really is the son of God. And then he <laughs> says, Duke, you know, it's just not working. Can you, I need a little more awe. And he went, Oh, he really is the <laughs> son of God. Um, anyway. Did you two record in the studio together ever? Do you remember? No. I don't think so. No. We did meet in a hallway. I, I recorded after you guys. We didn't know each other. Yeah, he was very cold to me. No, that's not true. <laughs> he was I was like, wow, time. hey, it's Nathan Lane. Hi. And he was like, hello. Oh, that I did not. That's how I recall. No. <laughs> Interesting. He's, this is an oral He's always thing. the victim. What it is is they recorded him and then I made it work. <laughs> um, you saved essentially his weaker readings by making. Uh, it like yeah, I just well, I, I raised it up. I guess is what I mean. <laughs> so our oral history has devolved. No, that would end yeah. this interview. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 